from Lubbock, Texas, Andy Hedges. This is The Red Cow by Larry McCorder. There you go. I almost put my rope on her once, but then I thought it through. I'd had my day in the sun long ago, so I left her for someone like you. Sounds to me like she run you off, I said to the silver-haired man. But there ain't a cow brood anywhere too much for a hand worth its sand. We were talking about the old red cow, a legend around these parts, and it's been said she'd put fear and dread in the punchiest cowboy's hearts. An old barren cow who'd escaped all the drives because she was big, mean, and clever. The manager said she was 12 years old. The old men said she'd been there forever. Now, legends don't scare a boy of 19 who thinks he's the pride of the nation, and I'm thinking if I pin this old cow, I'll sure have a good reputation. Where do I find this renegade beast, this scarlet scourge of the prairie? I'll lead, the, lead her through the bunkhouse door, and you'll think she was raised on a dairy. I'll bring her in, and she'll bear a grin, for she'll know that she's had her licking. For I'm a hand from the far away land where the hoot owls romance the chickens. <laughs> well, a gleam appeared in the old man's eye, and he was grinning a little too much. I'll tell you where the red cow lives, and while you're gone, I'll carve you a crutch. <laughs> oh, and give me your address before you leave. You'll want me to write your folks. <laughs> well, I left him there to amuse himself. I didn't care for his little jokes. The Sabbath sun caught me riding old Gus a sneaking through the brush like a ghost till we come to the mouth of the canyon where that outlaw had been seen the most. We come up on an old dirt tank about halfway up that draw and standing there for her morning drink was the biggest cow I ever saw. Her horns weren't tipped and she wore an old brand. Her ears were long and slick. And I thought of a big old rhinoceros I'd seen in a Tarzan flick. <laughs> I knew if I showed myself to her now back up the canyon she'd go, so I eased up high so I could drive her on down. And I'd catch her in the big flat below. I cinched up a notch, shook out a loop, pulled my horn knot tight, then I eased old Gus to the edge of the brush and showed myself ready to fight. Well, she's scared and confused with no place to hide. I've wrecked her psyche, I think. She's sized up her latest of pests, and then calmly went back to her drink. And we sat there and stared at each other a while till the red cow had drunk her fill. Then she stretched out her back and ever so slowly started walking towards me, <laughs> up the hill. Her stride betrayed no fear at all. It's like she'd been through this before. And about then, I started to doubt my own smarts, and I pondered the red cow's lore. Her slow, steady walk turned into a trot, and her mouth began to foam, and the closer she got, the more that I wished that me and old Gus had stayed home. <laughs> the walls of that canyon somehow looked steeper, and it looked a lot narrower, too. My perception had changed on a whole lot of things, and my brashness, I started to rue. I'd made my brag back at the ranch about the worth of a man who had balked. Now I found myself falling victim to my own yapping tongue's foolish talk. My moment of truth was on me now, and my smarts was fighting my pride, and that cow was locked in on me and old Gus. Then my outlook was rectified. The boss hadn't sent me out here on this wildcat venture of such. If she didn't bother him, then why should she me? Hell. One old red cow don't eat much. <laughs> Fifty feet between me and the cow, another thought entered my mind. There were many like me, but this cow that I faced was one of the last of her kind. Who was I to alter her fate, her freedom she'd fought long to keep? Oh, I could pin her, but then could I sleep? <laughs> well, I cringed at the thought of a grinning old man and the scorn I'd see in his eye, but I knew I was right, so I tipped my hat as the famous red cow trotted by.
The old man was waiting when I got in. The bunkhouse door opened wide. I've got things ready for you and your cow. A stool and a pail stood inside. Well, he rode me hard and he put me up wet till he seen that my pride was full peeled, but the scorn I expected he never showed. He said, son, I know just how you feel. You ain't the first to change his mind after doubting the red cow's lore. Few boys your age have dealt with her kind, but on her acoustic, you're just one more. And there comes a time in every man's life when he's forced to face his limitation. And your judgment was sound. So, son, you ain't no imitation. Oh, you talked a lot, but you took your shot, which is more than many have done. She force-fed you crow, but that taste we all know. So welcome to the humbled rank, son. Well, the years have gone by, and I reckon she's died. I know I never saw her again. But with all my heart, I hope that old girl never saw the inside of a pen. And though she's gone, her legend lives on, and I'm proud to be part of her lore, for the times have changed, and a brute of her kind is rarely seen anymore. The young sprouts now ask me about the cow. Tight-throated, I think, of that day. I recall my old friend and what he told me back then, and I grin at these pups, and I say, I almost put my rope on her once. <laughs> Then I thought it through. <laughs>